Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart, and this is So Much to Say YouTube TV. These are my thoughts in my voice on black shit, white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. So Much to Say YouTube TV is the place that you come to learn and grow because we discuss socially relevant things mixed with a splash of humor. If you know you have tissue paper feelings, this probably isn't the channel for you. But and however, since you're here, I just need for you to do two things. Hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on that little bell so that you get the notification every single time that I go live or upload something new. I'll see you soon. Bye. One of the best parts of life is when you can admit the truth to yourself about yourself. Cyberspace is a world where one can become something he isn't, but everything he dares to be. I wasn't interested in getting attached to anyone, and I knew I wouldn't take anyone I met online seriously. I had multiple screen names to increase my chances of meeting someone attractive. The majority of the profiles noted HIV negative under status, but I knew better from the work I had done in the HIV community. I knew one out of three black gay men was positive. The messages I found in my inbox validated me in my depression. In some strange way, they reinforced that I was worthy and deserving. My days consisted of waking up and logging on to see how many messages had accrued overnight. Months passed before I got honest with my therapist about what was happening with me. And before I knew it, I heard myself say, I've been having sex with people I meet online. To listen to more of Words Never Spoken in Memoir, visit audible.com. I was involved briefly with a married man who believed he had the courage to leave his wife to be with me and to live his truth. This isn't the typical story of a married man promising to leave his wife for a secret lover. Rather, this is a story in part about a gay man who knew he was gay before he got married, but chose to marry a woman because he didn't know how to break free. Rocky and I met on a gay social media site three months after I returned to the East Coast to live, and just 11 months after he was married. At the time we met, he was living and working in Dubai as a contractor for the government on a military base while his wife was stationed in Tallahassee, Florida, where they had a home. In one of the first messages he sent me, Rocky shared that he was married, but that he had regrets. He explained that he had come out to his mother and siblings when he was 18 years old. He said that to listen to more of One Thing for Certain, Two Things for Sure, a memoir continued, visit audible.com. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig Writer Stewart, and I want to introduce you guys to Revive Superfoods. And there's a promo code especially for you. Just visit revivesuperfoods.com and use promo code Craig the Writer. And I'm going to show you how to make a smoothie. And <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to make a smoothie in three simple steps. All you have to do is take the top off, take the seal. Again, visit revivesuperfoods.com and use promo code Craig the Writer for 55% off. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart, and I'm inviting you to join my Patreon. Don't know what a Patreon is? It's my official video diary with only exclusive content that you won't see anyplace else. It's easy to join. Just visit patreon.com forward slash Craig the Writer Stewart. Here's what you'll find on my Patreon. A day in my life, whether that's dinner with friends or a typical work day. Live Q&As with members of my Patreon about each episode of the T.S. Madison experience and what I was really thinking. I'll even bring you on vacation with me. The video will make you think that you are right there. And last but not least, for all of my aspiring writers, I give you firsthand, one-on-one, -on -one, personalized attention, answering all of your questions about publishing and self-publishing. So what are you waiting for? Join now. Swipe up or visit www.patreon.com forward slash Craig the Writer Stewart. I'll see you soon. Oh, and one more thing. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Craig the Writer. Do it now. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart. And, oh.
He said it. He's Carlton. And this is the Facebook and YouTube live versions of So Much To Say. These are my thoughts in my voice on black shit, white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. Thank you, Jackie, for sending that $1.99 uh, super chat right there. For those of you that were complaining about the commercials, you could have been sending something over to the Cash App or to the Zelle. <laughs> or you could have been liking the video. Hey, girl, hey, hey, boy, hey. They're saying, hey, Carlton. All right, so listen, we're going to jump right into these restaurant reviews today. I'm going to give you just, just a little background first before we get started. And I want to go ahead and make some evening announcements. <laughs> make sure you're sit sitting in the proper seats. In your right sections, your correct sections, like Marquetta said, no standing in the aisles. But Alicia gifted two sets of books. She's gifting four, all four books to two different people, right? And so she had posted in the So Much to Say podcast pen pal group last week. And some of you were emailing me, and I had no reason, I had no understanding why. I didn't even realize why you were doing it because I hadn't seen her post. But some of you that emailed already have the books. So with that being said, the first two people who do not have any of my books, I'm going to gift you all four books. That's two people, OK? But please, if you already have the books, do not email me. I will be checking my records to make sure that I have not already shipped you books. Um, and then the other thing that I want to say is that the Honest Hour will be returning. So if you are a small business and you have a product that you'd like to send in to us for us to evaluate, to, to use, and to talk about on the next Honest Hour, you can send that product here to that P.O. box that's scrolling at the bottom. It is free. Um, but again, if you have tissue paper feelings, don't send that shit to us because I'm definitely going to tell you how, it, how I like it or I don't. And um, but this is a way for you to get exposure for new customers, right? Um, is there one other thing that I wanted to say? I think that's it. All right, now before we get started, I'm gonna make this a uh, an ongoing thing. <laughs> I'm gonna make this an ongoing thing. So this restaurant review thing that we're doing, it, it may not always be restaurant reviews. It will just be reviews. Now I'm gonna tell you guys how this started. My friend Kim was in town last week or the week before. What happened? Hmm. And she came in town and she said, oh, you know, I want to go to the OLG, you know, old lady game restaurant. And so I said to her, I said, what you want to go over there for? She said, I just want to go. I said, well, you know, if you want to go, you can. I said, you need to look at those restaurant reviews first. And so we pulled up the restaurant reviews. And it reminded me that I was going to do this thing where I just start reading reviews because I read, read reviews all the time. You guys know that I purchase uh, stuff from Groupon all the time. And before I buy things on Groupon, I always look at the reviews and I just be chuckling to myself when I'm reading them because the way that the people be describing the stuff is just hilarious. So for those of you who are candy fans, please don't email me. I'm not trying to tear down her restaurant. That's not what I'm doing. These reviews are already public. They're already on Google. They're already on Yelp. And I just happened to read through some of them. And the ones that made me laugh, I screenshotted them. And I'm going to share them with you guys. Now, my hope is, if anything, if this gets back to Candy by chance, I'm not saying that it should, but just in case it does, hopefully they will read these reviews and they will improve their business over there. And again, this is not just going to be black businesses. This just happens to be Candy's restaurant OLG and Blaze, which is their steakhouse. And again, it was only because my friend Kim was going to go there and we started reading the restaurant reviews. But at any rate, at, at any rate. All right. So this is where we're going to start. OK, so this review was posted a week ago <laughs> and it's from somebody named Shana. And she says, I don't ever have to go back Four exclamation points. We stood outside waiting almost two hours only to get inside to have our name put on a list. Three exclamation points. The hostess walked us downstairs to wait on the patio where we waited another hour. We then went to be seated and waited for another 15 minutes for our server. Sis was the server, bartender, and runner. Four exclamation points. She was sweet and she could sing. Capital letters. 
but she was doing so much. She kept forgetting stuff, three exclamation points. The deviled eggs were very good, but, but it was kind of salty and I only, no, she says, but I was kind of salty because I only got four, two exclamation points. The salmon bites were good, just a tad salty. The shrimp and grits were good and creamy, but they came out already hardened and stuck together. I asked for bread pudding twice, capital letters, and the server still brought me out a peach cobbler. <laughs> Two exclamation points. I just took it because it was, I just took it because I was over it at this point and wasn't about to wait again. So that was from Shana. Okay. All right, now the next review comes from somebody named Misley, M-Y-S-L-I-E. This was two weeks ago. We really, oh, wait, wait, let me tell you what. So Shana gave two stars, two stars out of five. Okay, so this one is Misley or Missley. She gave one star and this was two weeks ago. She says, we really wanted to eat here for our last night before heading back home to Florida. We arrived before six and the lady hostess, who was really nice by the way, put my name down and informed me it would be an hour wait. I went and waited in the car and came back exactly an hour later. Another guy was at the entrance and told me he could not see our party of six anymore and was getting ready to call me. So you mean to tell me he's about to call you and tell you that he couldn't seat you no more? <laughs> Mind you, there was another party of six who signed in at the same time that I did. They were already seated. I told him it was our last night in Atlanta and we were really, I'm sorry, we were already told it would be an hour and really wanted to eat here. He was unapologetic, kept saying they could not seat us and they were closing in one hour. This was not a good experience and would never, and would never have had experienced and would have never experienced this. Some of y'all be having grammatical errors and would have never experienced this in Orlando. You do not tell someone it's an hour wait and then after waiting the full hour, turn them away and not even attempt to accommodate them. We were very disappointed. So she gave one star. So then first of all, I, listen, waiting for a whole hour and all that other stuff, I don't even know if I would have went back to my car. I probably would have just stood there. I don't think I would have gone to the car because you run the risk of getting overlooked. So anyway, so this is somebody named M. Williams. This was four weeks ago. Two stars. I went on a Monday. The wait was two hours for a table for a group of three. So we decided to get takeout so we can still support the business. The bartender took our order and she really seemed like she did not want to be there. No smiles, no common courtesy was given, just bad attitude. <laughs> It took about an hour for our food and the food looked rushed. It was not good, just ordinary and plain. For the prices that they have, food should be tasty with great presentation. This food cost about $90. I don't think I'll ever go back again. I've had better food in the city that was cheaper. You know what? You know what? <laughs> ah, and she got a picture of the food. Here's a picture of the food. Look at that little sad piece of fish and them green beans just thrown in there. All right, so this is Autumn Rose. She left three stars. This was about five weeks ago. And she says, the food looks amazing, but it just tastes okay. The rib tips were a little tough and the sauce was nothing special. <laughs> the mac and cheese didn't taste cheesy or have much flavor and the sweet potato souffle had a weird flavor. Didn't have the usual yummy spices I expected. <laughs> the cornbread was the best thing on my plate. The wait time was a bit much, but that was expected and we shopped to waste time. The staff was friendly, no compa complaints there. Cute place and the prices weren't too bad. I love the music though, big plus. Overall, I enjoyed the experience. I just wish the food was as delicious as it looked. But see, here's the thing, what I'm already starting to see, some of the themes here is really the staff. And that's really important, especially when you have a restaurant um, and, you're, and you know, cause it's representing you and you have people coming in to eat 
And you, you know, your staff is going to be the first line of defense. So like when people come in to eat, if your host or hostess is rude or your server is, you know, your service aren't really um, congenial, like that's going to be a reflection on, on you, the owner. So this is somebody named Ron Tesner. He gave one star. And this was two weeks ago. He says, arrived around 4 p.m., was long line outside. I'm going to read it exactly how he wrote it. Arrived around 4 p.m., was long line outside. Within 10 minutes, they took large group back. Host states she'd be back to get names on list. One hour of waiting, no host. People coming out, but no one going in. The lady comes out, states that they've been there since 12 p.m. when it opened. Mind you, this is at 4 p.m., he said. The lady's been there since noon and they take you back and seat you in another section. You wait there for two hours to be seated. Then one hour, then there's a one hour wait once they ordered. Sorry, but no thanks. One star. All right, so Christopher Williams gave one star. He says, I went to surprise, but this, is, this was one of my favorite ones. This one had me tickled. All right, so this is one star. He says, I went to surprise my wife for her birthday because I knew she was fascinated about one of the owners. We got there at 7 p.m. Sunday. It wasn't packed at all, and people were still going in. I dropped my wife off at the door and went to park. How about, look, this is how he says it. How about they turn her around at the door? <laughs> <laughs> How about they turn her around at the door saying they're not taking any more customers? One whole hour before closing? Now, a friend recommended this restaurant, but not this particular one, but the one on Camp Creek, if I'm saying it right. I guess I should have went there because this one gave us their behind the kiss. <laughs> I guess you're supposed to support your own, even though they don't really feel like supporting you. See, this is what I say all the time about Black businesses. You know, black people are always encouraged to support black businesses, but sometimes we don't get great customer service from black people. So he said, I'm gonna read that sentence again. He says, uh, I guess you're supposed to support your own even though they don't really feel like supporting you. But I will say thank you for turning us around because the Mexican restaurant around the corner, no mas, welcomed us right in. Everyone was having a really good time. The food, drinks, and service were great, again, Thank you for showing us your real Southern hospitality and turning us away, old lady gang. We really appreciate you for pointing us in the right direction. <laughs> One star. He was not playing with them. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let me get to the next one. Okay, now this was a Yelp review and this was about 10 days ago. One star. As black owned business owners, we must do better. A group of five went to OLG for dinner and my name and number was taken down by the hostess to place on a waiting list. We were told to go in the holding tank, AKA waiting room to be called once the table was ready. We went to a room that was basically a lounge and was hit with the sale of drinks. However, we gracefully declined. We waited for approximately an hour and never received a call. While we waited, I conducted a search on other businesses with high reviews. <laughs> I also read reviews on the OLG restaurant. Listen to your customers and tweak the issues. It's a day later and I have yet to receive my call for my table. <laughs> She says, I, <laughs> she says, <laughs> ah, she said, I called to follow up with the poor customer service and received a voice recording that the mailbox was full. <laughs> ah, oh my God. Oh my God. I would give it a zero, but one does not exist on Yelp. The service at OLG is unacceptable. <laughs> Couldn't even leave a voice message. <laughs> That's 
hilarious. Oh my God. Okay, so this one is uh, TH. This was left about 10 days ago, one star. We arrived to the restaurant two hours before closing. The restaurant closes at 8 p.m. And was told our wait would be one and a half hours. So we decided to wait. They had us to wait in a lounge until they call our phone to let us know our table is ready. We received a call at 7.40 p.m. Now, mind you, the restaurant closes at 8. We received a call at 7.40 p.m. stating that, the, that they would not be able to see us because of the time. That is poor customer service. I understand the closing time, but to have customers wait for that long only to turn them away is unacceptable. Needless to say, I will never experience the food because I will not return. Oh, and it's $10 to park in their parking lot. <laughs> It's $10 to park in their parking lot. Oh my God. Okay, this is Nakia Crawford, one star. This was left about two weeks ago. Poor service, two exclamation points. We was asked, she said we was, we was asked to wait for an hour, but we couldn't wait inside due to COVID-19. So we left and returned in an hour and we had to wait for 20 more minutes because of the size of the group. But then we were seated then we were seated and then the hostess was talking to the manager and she said to the hostess that we had to get up and go back outside to wait again. Three exclamation points. I told the waitress, no, thank you. <laughs> Three exclamation points. That's it. That's all she said. Nakia was hot. Okay, so here's Tex Texas gal 77. She left two stars. And this was two weeks ago, more three weeks ago. So she says, the wait was too long. Our group was split, half upstairs, half downstairs. The food was not good. The white fish was so salty, it was inedible. The lounge drinks and atmosphere and meeting Aunt Bertha was the only good thing about the establishment. That was all she said. Dee Dee Tate, one star. She left this about 10 days ago. After waiting one hour in line, two hours in Peter's Lounge, and one hour for appetizers and food, me and my friends decided to leave without eating. You guys gotta do better. I'm highly disappointed, exclamation point. This is too funny to me. Uh, Ashunda, we have been live for 24 minutes. All right, so this one said, this one is from somebody named Miller Time Home Chef, two stars two weeks ago. I really want to at least give this place three stars, but I just can't. <laughs> but I just can't. <laughs> uh, she says, a lot of things need to be done here. <laughs> ah, oh my God. She says, I ordered the lamb chops, you get three. One was well done, one was medium well, and one was rare. <laughs> oh my God, wait, how you get three lamb chops and they come, in, they come cooked in three different temperatures? So then she says, she says, I ordered it medium. This place has a temperature problem. And I am a real chef who needs to be working here. Seems like it's just a McDonald's worker back there. <laughs> Service was extremely slow. I was there for an hour and I told my girlfriend, dang, it's been over an hour and I've only had one drink. We come in from out of town and we want to have a couple of drinks and eat some good food. Everything was good to me at our table, except for the meat, the steak, the ladies ordered medium, came out well done. And like I stated earlier, my lamb chop was not good. Seafood bisque, it says amazing. Grilled baked oysters were pretty good. We ordered them twice. Service needs to pick up. Kitchen is slow and the food is just okay. You can't have this kind of name behind it with mediocre food. <laughs> it's too many amazing steakhouses. Get it right, I'm rooting for y'all. So this must have been for Blaze, the steakhouse. This is not for OLG. This must be for Blaze, the steakhouse. 
Oh my God. All right, so this person says, uh, this is Kyrie. Two stars, this was a month ago. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> my girl, Les said, well, if you're a real chef, you should have stayed home. <laughs> well, sometimes you want to go out and cook and you know have a nice meal. Okay, so Kyrie says, he has two stars, this was a month ago. Kyrie says, the most despicable experience I've ever had, one exclamation point. While I must say my steak was really good, my son ordered a $50 ribeye. A ribeye? A $50? He ordered it medium. When it came to the table, it was well done. When we brought it to the attention of the waitress, she went in the back and talked to management, and she said she could discount the meal for him rather than offering him a new steak. She questioned him, are you sure you ordered it medium? <laughs> are you sure you ordered it medium? <laughs> ah. Her attitude made me feel as though the managers charged the servers for their mistakes. My son sat there, did not eat. Finally, she went to the back and stomped back to the table and took the steak off. What pisses me off is we don't care about money, we pay for service. This was piss poor. I will not be back, exclamation point. Listen, when I tell you these things have had me rolling, I pulled these a while ago. And when I tell you, <laughs> I, I laugh so hard reading these things, <sighs> okay, so this is about, um, so that last review, that was um, Blaze. This restaurant review that I'm about to read now is OLG. One star, this is on Yelp, and it doesn't have a person's name. So it says, so for starters, I, I asked the hostess, <laughs> you already know this is about to be a shit show. She says, so for starters, I asked the hostess how long to wait for two. <laughs> wait, I'm going to read it exactly how she wrote it. So for starters, I asked the hostess how long the wait for two was, and she rudely says it's a three and a half hour wait, and to skip the wait is $50. Wait a minute. So you mean, you, you mean to tell me, excuse me, somebody said be fair. I'm, no, niece, these were the reviews, niece. You go over there and look for some good ones. I'm reading you what was on there. Didn't I start this by saying I'm just reading what was there? I read the part where somebody said the food, somebody said something they had was good. But there weren't any good ones. I'm reading you what was there. But wait a minute, how are you charging people $50 to, uh, to skip the wait? This is a restaurant, this is not a club. Like, you know how they, they have the skip line at the... So after we paid the $50, they paid the $50. So after we pay the $50, we wait another 10 minutes for our server to come take our drink, food, drink and food order. The server never came back to check on us or tell us that the kitchen was going to take two hours to make our food. Now, here's the thing about that, that $50 thing. I don't think that's something that, that Candy authorizes. I think whoever was at that host stand probably took that $50 and moved that person up. You know how you set workers do. So, you know, that was a little side hustle. So anyway, she says, the server never came back to check on us or tell us that the kitchen was gonna take two hours to make our food. Didn't even refill our drinks. <laughs> Not to mention it was dead with a thousand tables open after we just laid the hostess. I'm sorry, she said laid, but it's supposed to be paid. But after we just paid the hostess to let us sit, never again, rude, worst customer service of my of my life, let alone not worth it. That was terrible. But my thing is, 
here and and I'm not done reading them, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna stop for a second to say this. I really feel like <clears throat> good management, and see, this is where good business comes in. Good good business sense comes in. Because you are a restaurant, I'm sure somebody over there has seen or heard some of these reviews, right? It seems to me like some of the people that work there, whether it's management or whatever, should reach out either to the customers or they should read these reviews and then apply it over at, at, the, at the business. But see, this is what happens when you, and I don't know what's going on over there at Blaze or, or OLG, but the streets have been saying for years that they don't like to really pay people. <laughs> so my thing is you got to pay for a decent chef, like people who really know what they're doing. There's a difference between a chef and a cook. You know, and you need servers who have experience waiting tables or you need people who have experience um, in customer service. Like you can't just have people who are just there for the fast money. They want the tips and just whatever. Like you, you, you need to manage better. So again, the reason that I even came across these, for those of you who may be just signing in, a friend of mine was in town last week and wanted to go to OLG. And I was like, um, well, you need to read some of those restaurant reviews. <laughs> and so we started reading the restaurant reviews and I have been wanting to do, um, you know, read like restaurant reviews and stuff, not necessarily for this particular place, but I had been saying I was going to do it because one day I just, it just came to my, came as an idea, but I never got around to doing it. So when my friend Kim was here and we were reading these reviews, I said, oh, wait a minute, let me screenshot these. I'm about to start doing my, read, my restaurant reviews. But anyway, not even just restaurant reviews, but just period. So this one is from somebody whose name I can't pronounce. It's two stars and it says the restaurant was cold and sterile. The ambiance was not there. It felt like a sports bar in the middle of a warehouse. I was quite disappointed. The food was overpriced and they skimped on their protein. My salmon was cut into two. It was a slice of a whole salmon. When I asked what happened to the salmon, then the other half of my salmon was brought to me on a second plate already cooked. <laughs> The food was overcooked. My husband's steak was very dry. Let me just say this right here. I think what they're doing, because you know, this is the third review that we've read where they're saying that the steak is overcooked. I think they're anticipating, because you know, black folks, we like our food cooked. Now, those that, now when I used to eat steak, I used to do mine medium well, because I don't like all that red and pink and shit. But most, most people, most black people, if we being honest, like their meat cooked well. So I guess they're trying to anticipate that you gonna really want your steak well and they're not trying to have you fuck up their steak. But still, when a customer asks for a steak medium, then you need to prepare it medium. But see, again, this goes back to skill. Maybe those people that they have over there cooking aren't chefs. And maybe they don't know the difference between medium, medium well, medium rare, and rare. I don't know. But anyway, so she says, when I, she said, um, my salmon was cut in two. It was a slice of a whole salmon. When I asked what happened to the salmon, then the other half came out on a second plate already cooked. The food was overcooked. My husband's steak was very dry. He wanted to leave the minute we were seated. I convinced him to stay, to give it a chance, but that was a mistake. Our server was really nice. That was the only good thing about our dinner at Blades. Okay, this is Jeremy. He left this, left this about five weeks ago. One star. I was excited to experience Blaze with my friends because I loved OLG. I was extremely disappointed. My server, Jermaine, was excellent. However, the food was trash. With the exception of my fries and calamari. We dined in, in a group of four and each ordered various items from the menu, which were not prepared according to the menu. I ordered oysters, which were not great. They over seasoned them and used way too much oregano. I also ordered the seafood fritters, hush puppies according to the menu. And I couldn't tell you what I was eating, horrible. Then there was the salmon Alfredo. This dish was extremely bland, lacking any true flavor, it tasted like Alfredo in a glass from a grocery store.
<laughs> she said, I mean, he says, um, the mac and cheese was possibly the worst I've ever had in a restaurant. The steak was overcooked. I ordered it medium. There we go again. When asked for steak sauce, we were advised it was a house sauce. It was indeed A1. <laughs> they tried to pass off some A1 as a house sauce. Oh my God, stop it. Uh, what did Tara Maya say? Let me scroll back up and see what she said. Uh, uh, oh my God, this is hilarious. Anyway, so then he says, I can't find Tara's comment. So then he says, there was then a shell in the gumbo we ordered. Now, I'm not going to give him too much problem with that because sometimes when you, when you do like a gumbo, sometimes a, a shell might end up in there, you know. There was then a shell in the gumbo we ordered. The gumbo itself was pretty good. We also ordered drinks which were served inconsistent to what the menu specified. They originally served us old, an old-fashioned with regular restaurant ice with a large peel. Overall, I give Blaze a two out of 10, only because Jermaine was super nice and did the best he could with what he had. He was the best part of Blaze. When I say y'all are something else, thank you very much, uh, Jackie. Yes, I'm reading this the way that I read my audible books, but of course there's no stutt stuttering and stammering because I'm able to go back and um, edit those out. Um, Wanda Jenkins. This was about two and a half months ago. One star. Went to Blaze on, yeah, this was, okay, she put the date. It was January 24th. Went to Blaze on Sunday, January 24th, 2021. With a party of five, hoping to enjoy a nice Sunday meal. What a disappointment, exclamation point. I ordered the salmon. The salmon was overcooked, dry, served with some kind of overly sweet sauce over rice, not even edible. I had to order some $7 French fries. <laughs> I had to order some $7 French fries so I could have something to eat. My niece ordered a hamburger that was well done, 13 year, years old. The hamburger was cremated to ash. <laughs> the hamburger was cremated to ashes, exclamation point. Another party member ordered the pasta with shrimp that was swimming in a bland, oily Alfredo sauce. Now, now the boy in the last review just said the same thing about this Alfredo sauce tasting like something that came out of a, out of a, rest of, a supermarket jar. So then she says, my mom doesn't complain about food. However, she was very polite and was trying to farm off her dinner on the rest of us. She said farm off, <laughs> farm. <laughs> I like the way she wrote this. That's how that's how I know her dish was not good either. She was trying to trying hard to give it away. One dish that was good was the chicken. Now let's talk about the drinks. <laughs> now let's talk about the drink. Ordered three drinks, two rum punches, and we were for sure they forgot the rum. <laughs> the waitress was nice and got us some rum to top off the drinks. Overall, highly disappointed, was expecting better. When I say this is too funny, this was too funny to me. Cremated to ashes. That was Wanda Jenkins. All right, Henry Thornton, one star. The host was very professional, but that was the best part of my experience. The service was slow. I had the stuffed chicken in which nothing was stuffed. Just a bland tasting sauce. My date had the lamb chops. The lamb chops were not good. The food was not hot. I want to support every uh, restaurant in my community, but I will not return and will not vouch for anyone to go to this place. The food was overly priced and was horrible. <laughs> that was Henry. <laughs> ah, okay, Shyless, I think her name is, one star. This was about two weeks ago. Baby, when I say when I say I remember reading this, she said, listen, she was such she was so sister girl in this review. Now watch this. She says, so our reservation was at 8 p.m. <laughs> Just the way she starts off. So our reservation was at 8 p.m. But we weren't we weren't seated until 8:30. And then she put the emoji where it's like, oh. 
In addition to not being seated on time, we also had to endure subpar service. Not only was the food horrible, and in parentheses she's put dry and lack flavor, the wine was blamed, but they also charged my card twice, capital letters, exclamation point. Then she goes on to say, they refused to give me my money back. I spoke with the manager, Kwame, and no shade, but I actually know Kwame. I spoke with the manager, Kwame, via phone multiple times. He assured me the issue would be handled after I received proof of my charge. Once the evidence, and in parentheses she says, bank statement and copy of receipt was provided, they still refused to give it back. I contacted them from March 5th to March 9th. I had to go through my bank to get my money back. Also, do not order the steak from here. <laughs> Wait, so then she says, it's a sad time when a steakhouse, all capital letters, tells you they can't cook your meal at anything above medium well. And then she put the emoji like this, the little side eye emoji. Then she says, how a steakhouse can't provide you. <laughs> Wait, this is exactly how she said it. She said, how a steakhouse can't provide you with a medium rare steak is beyond me. <laughs> so then she said, Candy, you need to hire new everything, new staff and especially new cooks, exclamation point. Would not recommend at all. Save your time and head to many other... <laughs> Save your time and head to the many other great Black-owned restaurants in Atlanta. <laughs> ah, oh, my God. That is too funny. All right, so then it's Jasmine Ritchie. She left one star. She says, this place has to do better, exclamation point. Won't be back. The food is overpriced as well as the drinks. This is not fine dining, and the drinks aren't craft cocktails. So I have no idea why they're charging $15 to $16. The drinks don't even have any type of garnish on them. This place is a joke. How do you just open and have an 88 score? My entree was the flounder and shrimp. The dish wasn't that bad, but the sauce overpowered the entire meal. The shrimp were overcooked. I had a side of Brussels sprouts, and those were good. The salad on the side of the flounder was way too salty. Now, how is a salad salty? $54 for a meal and one drink, not worth it at all. That was Jasmine. <laughs> okay, here's Barbara. Barbara said, <laughs> Barbara said, <laughs> Barbara gave him one star and her, her, her uh, review was posted three and a half months ago. So she says, well, this was the start to my birthday weekend. <laughs> Can you imagine your birthday and you go to this restaurant and this is what happens? You know, you remember that show that Gordon Ramsay used to do where they used to, um, when he used to go into a restaurant and he would like shake them up and stuff. I think that, where the Hell's Kitchen? I think that's Hell's Kitchen. They need to send them over, him over there. Anyway, she says, well, this was the start to my birthday weekend. Won't be back here again. We ordered our food at 8.38 p.m. She had it down to the minute. 8.38 p.m. and got served about an hour and a half later. The rolls were doughy and I ordered my steak well done. I'm thinking after all this weight, my steak would have been cooked to my liking. It was not. <laughs> I had them to take it back. I wasn't going to wait for them to cook another steak. We would have been there all night. <laughs> ah, we would have been there all night. All right, so Creamy Divine. One star, this is about five weeks ago. I came to Atlanta from St. Louis, Missouri to eat at this restaurant. I went on Friday night and was told I need a reservation. However, they were not accepting any more that night. I had been calling from Thursday to Sunday. I was finally able to speak with someone Saturday and they said they were booked. I called Sunday, they said they were booked. That's the end of the review. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so. This is Kiana. This is five months ago. One star. And she says the ambiance was nice, but that's about it. <laughs> we waited an hour for our food to come out and it wasn't good. 
my husband ordered the lamb chops. And then see, what y'all need to do is stay away from them lamb chops and get the fried chicken over there. It seemed like they do okay with the fried chicken. My husband ordered the lamb chops with the kale mashed potatoes and it was horrible. There was no seasoning on anything. <laughs> the mashed potatoes had to be instant with no salt or pepper. <laughs> They didn't even put no salt or pepper in the potatoes. The manager tried to make it better by bringing out a side of garlic noodles. Those, <laughs> those were awful as well. <laughs> we sent his bill back. I will not be coming back. Would not recommend. Oh my God. Whew. This is too funny. Okay, this is Mrs. Needy. She had she gave two stars, and this was about five weeks ago. There is still work to be done. Wait time is long, all capital letters. It took 45 minutes to get water and soda, soda, one hour for an alcoholic beverage and almost two hours for the actual food. <laughs> the food was so-so. My meal was salty, salmon and grits. My eggs were accidentally made in garlic butter. How do you accidentally make eggs in garlic butter? So then she says, my daughter's French toast was burnt. <laughs> and it's not funny that these people went and had tried to have these great experiences and like on their birthdays or anniversaries and this is what happens. This is so unfortunate. She said, my daughter's French toast was burnt and served with peaches. Now, when have they, when have you known French toast to come out with peaches? Then in parentheses, she's put, the menu does not mention that French toast will be served with, the, with peaches all over it. And she don't like peaches. <laughs> and she don't like peaches. <laughs> oh my God. But wait, this also references back to what the other guy said, that there are things that are on, that the food comes out in a way that it's not referenced on the menu. So she's saying the same thing. She said the menu does not mention that the French toast will be served with peaches all over it. And she don't like peaches. <laughs> and she don't like peaches. <laughs> I can only imagine her saying this. Oh my God. And I can see her picture. Look, this is her picture. This is the lady pink. This is the lady. Hodge. This is the hey. You better be quiet. This is the lady picture said her daughter don't like peaches. Hey, quiet. I ain't gonna come crawl up under me. So then she says, our server was really nice. Our server was very nice and worked hard to make our time enjoyable. She was very understanding and had an explanation or answer for all of our questions and concerns and quickly took care of our meal concerns. Thank you, Tara. Recommendation. This is to the staff. Staffing, make sure you have enough people to handle the brunch run on Sundays. Take reservations. Larger parties that showed up were discouraged when they were told that their party would have to be split. Don't be afraid to tell folks that they have to wait. While the space was set up for social distancing, every table was occupied. Lighten up on the seasoning. That's advice number three. And separate the real butter from the garlic butter. <laughs> so then she says, create a space for real time feedback, especially during the soft opening. Oh my God, that is too funny. Okay, so Amy Jackson. <clears throat> Amy Jackson left her review about a month and a half ago. So she said, the first time I came is when they had a soft opening and the food was so good. We had brunch that day. Fast forward to 2020. <laughs> Fast forward to February 2020. <clears throat> and the food was trash. I ordered the Delmonico steak, mashed potatoes, and salad. When that steak came out, it was small as heck and the mashed potatoes was horrible. I'm sorry, a $45 steak shouldn't be that small and tough. Yeah, I will not be back or recommending this restaurant to anyone. If, if you're gonna have Ruth Chris prices, 
at least make the food taste good and the steak at that price should not be that small. I will, then she says, I think a lot of people get excited because it's a celebrity that owns this restaurant. Even still, the food should taste and look good. Definitely put a bad taste in my mouth, literally. <laughs> oh my God, she is tearing them up. Whew. Oh my God. Okay, so here's Katrina. This was for her birthday. This was five months ago. And she gave one star. And she says, <laughs> so then she says, I went to Blaze for my birthday with a party of seven. First, then listen, when a black woman starts a sentence with first, you know she about to light into them. First, they said they were getting our table ready and came back 20 minutes later to take us to our table. The waiter bought one pan, well, she meant brought. The waiter brought one pan of bread with five pieces. <laughs> Wait, y'all not ready for this. <laughs> Hold on. Les, big, my girl Les, there were no five-star reviews, niece. I'm sorry. I didn't see any. <clears throat> Listen, she says, now remember, it was a party of seven. She said the waiter brought out a pan of bread with five pieces for seven people. And I had to ask for another bread pan for my other guests. The food was horrible and cold, no taste. They, they brought my plate out, wait. Okay, here we go, she, this is a run on sentence. She says, the food was horrible and, the, and cold, no taste, and they brought my plate and the six others waited. We got our food two hours later, we were livid and decided to walk out. Watch this. Todd was there and said he was going to take care of us. He wanted to charge us half price, but it wasn't worth it. And we refused to pay for the food. We ended up giving the $100. Their staff is clueless about the restaurant business. I just said that a couple of reviews ago. The cook is definitely not a five-star chef. No taste to the food. And my birthday was awful. So I decided to celebrate again this weekend <laughs> and go to another restaurant. I will not return. Oh my God. I'm only reading what's on here, niece. I said this at the beginning of the video. All right, so listen. This is uh, Artrina, Artrina Montgomery. This was about three months ago. <clears throat> and she says, uh, <laughs> Todd when they got shit, but the deuces. Whoo, somebody get candy on the line now. Anyway, so our trainer says, this was two months ago, about two and a half months ago, uh, she left one star. She says, hello. <laughs> First time visiting front door waitress. Oh, run on sentence, hold on. First time visiting front door waitress took our name and phone number, explained the party of three will have to wait one hour. The time was 1.10 p.m. After waiting for one hour, Blaze called our phone at 2.10 p.m stated that we were getting pushed back to 3 p.m. due to the fact that the kitchen told her brunch is over and they are now transitioning to dinner. But brunch is until, two, until 3 p.m. I'm very disappointed with how this went about and for that, I'll rate you a one. <laughs> this is Kimberly Morris. Kimberly Morris, she left her review four months ago. This was one star. She says, such a poor experience, however, Fee, our server, was great. The food was cold, took forever to come out, and nothing was as described. Again, on the menu, they're not describing the food the way it's coming out. This should be more of a lounge with a patio chair set up. <laughs> this should be more of a lounge with a patio chair set up because it is not giving a steak and seafood vibe. It is not fine dining, though the prices say they are. They could come down about 30 to 40% and add hookahs and a DJ, and you might, she spelled might, M-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-G-H-G-H-H-H-T, be on track, and you might be on track. No hats are allowed, and I can't understand for the life of me why that's the case, because again, it's not upscale. <laughs> She said it's not upscale. Then she says, the tables and chairs were giving clearance from Big Lots. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh my God, oh my God. She said the tables and chairs were giving clearance from Big Lots. 
Davis and Chance were giving big lots. We're giving clearance from big lots. Anyway, don't waste your time or money. <laughs> and I so hate and I so hate it because I love supporting our people. Now that that was an honest review from uh, from Kimberly Morris. She said, "Anyway, don't waste your time or money." And I so hate it because I love supporting our people. All right, here's Tiana Lacey. She left this review two months ago, and um, it's a one star. She says the shrimp and grits was so disappointing after waiting two hours for our food. Grits were too salty and they did not clean my glass very well. Our waitress was nice and all, but Candy and Todd should replace whoever washes dishes and the cooks. <laughs> ah! All right, listen, we got three more. We got three more and that's gonna be it, all right? So she says, I'm reading the people's names because they wrote their names on the review. I'm only reading the stuff that's already out there for you to see it, right? All right, her name is Christy Rosser. She left this four months ago, one star. My family and I came here for a birthday dinner. We waited two hours for our food. When we received our food, the seafood boil was not done and it was nasty. My burger was burnt and not good. <laughs> I'm trying to type my client's progress notes. <laughs> ah! Okay, wait. I'm gonna finish reading this review. Hold on, hold on. Let me uh, listen. I'm trying. I'm gonna make this a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make this a regular thing. I'm gonna just choose different restaurants or different places, and I'm gonna just read the review. Okay, so she says we waited two hours for our food. When we received our food, the seafood boy was not done, and it was nasty. My burger was burnt and not good. When we told the manager, it looked like she couldn't care less about our concerns. I hope this place gets better, but I personally will not be returning. All right, now here's Lorenzo. He left his uh, review two and a half months ago, one star. I am highly disappointed. I am highly upset and disappointed. My family and I came to enjoy brunch. I was put on a waiting list at exactly 1.15 p.m. Okay, fine. But we received a phone call stating that we, we could attend brunch. He says, okay, fine, but we've received a phone call stating that we could attend brunch and if we wanted to eat, we would be, wait, what? What is he trying to say here? Okay, here it is. The sentence is bad, but let me, I'm gonna tell you what he's saying. He says, okay, fine. Now remember, they got there at 115. He says, uh, we got a phone call and we were told that we could attend brunch, but it would be after 3.15 p.m. I am a big fan of Candy and Todd, but this was no. This was a. This was not what I was expecting. He put no. This was not what I was expecting. When I'm in town again, I'll give it another shot, but I had to rate it a one star. All right, now this is the last review. She gave him three stars. This is Marlene Mackey, and this was about two and a half, three weeks ago. She said, food was salty. I don't think the value matches the price. It was just okay. May give it another chance at dinner time instead of lunch. <laughs> That's all she said. So anyway, those are the reviews. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. I read them when I first pulled these reviews and I read them again tonight and I still was tickled. But at any rate, um, don't forget the first two people that emailed me your full address for all four of the books that my girl Alicia is gifting. I will get those out to you. Um, please, if you already received, if you already have the books, please don't email me these because I'm just going to overlook you because I already know who I have sent books out to. I mean, I don't know by heart, but I'm going to go and look through my uh, my emails. But at any rate, listen, thank you guys for um, shooting something over here to that cash app, uh, the super chat. I appreciate it. Don't forget all of the merchandise is on sale over at CraigTheWriterStewart.com. The hoodies, the t-shirts, they're all 25% off. You just need to put in promo code SALE, S-A-L-E, all right? S-A-L-E. Thank you so much, Lawrence. I appreciate that. But anyway, you guys have an amazing night. Brush your teeth, floss your teeth, brush your tongue, and I will see you tomorrow on Tuesday. Hopefully I can get a haircut. My barber ain't got no appointment until Friday, and it's only Monday. Bye, y'all.